Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'm here today to explain to you about imposter spirits. You know, what we hear on the psychic plane in the dreamtime realm or on the astral plane isn't always what it appears to be. For instance, you may hear a voice and it sounds like a man. It sounds like a man's voice. Or you may hear a voice that sounds like a woman's voice. Or even a voice that sounds like a child's voice. But is it? For instance, sometimes people who practice black magic or mind control will say in the psychic realm, may I sound like so and so. It might be a man talking and he might hope to sound like another man known to the person to whom he's sending this thought form, or he might sound like a woman, or he might sound like a little child. The same is true of women sometimes who practice black magic or mind control. They may send off a thought form that's deceptive, that it seems like a thought form from an imposter spirit. Children do that too sometimes just for fun when they play. They play make-believe. Pretend they're someone else. You know, in the folklore of different, um, of different continents even, and different islands in the world, there are a number of traditions about imposter spirits. Apparently, indigenous cults ran into them uh, from time to time in the years before the major religions uh, took hold in the hearts and minds of the people of this world. For instance, in Japan, there's all kinds of stories about an imposter spirit known as the fox people. These are the fox people. And they live under people's houses and they pretend to be people. That's right, they pretend to be people. And there are all kinds of folklore stories about this, about how they might even marry a man and, and pretend to be human. But you can tell by their red hair that they're really foxes. Here in California, in my backyard, in fact, every night, uh, there's a visit from another kind of imposter spirit. And that imposter spirit is the coyote. The coyote. We have now coyote pups, too. They're very playful out in the backwoods over there in the nature preserve and down the hill amongst the juniper shrubs. Um, uh, in my neighbor's backyard there are dens of coyotes families and I have to say that they influence the astral airs that I sense every day. In the afternoons they lie dreaming and, and in the early morning before sunlight they, they come out and they hunt. And when mom or dad brings home the bacon, they, they all have a delightful um, party together, uh, exclaiming loudly and, and yipping and carrying on. They just have a wonderful time of it every time they succeed in getting breakfast. <laughs> and then when they lie dreaming in the afternoon, they can influence the newosphere out here in the, in the suburbs and bring in uh, imposter spirits because they're pretty tricky. They can bring in imposter spirits. Um, 
that might be human or they might be otherly, these imposter spirits might in fact be more akin to the wolf clan. Yes, they might be predatory imposter spirits. Very predatory, very prowl around, very get my own, very who cares about you sorts of spirits. They might bring in insectian star species or reptilian star species that overlight the insect and the reptile clans here on Earth. And so, or they might bring in mammalian star races and star species that, that are more predatory in nature, more like the, the military uh, clans of far-flung constellations the military people. And so uh, there might be a whole separate cast of people that's mainly in the job of protecting all of the star beings in, on that particular world. You know what I mean? Sounds very different. Sounds very different from the Christed star beings. And so we have to distinguish what we hear on the astral plane by the time of day, by the mood of the thought forms. If the thought forms seem predatory and negative, then there has to be a way, we have to develop a way to disbelieve them and toss them out of our heads. One thing I'm experimenting with recently in the afternoons is playing soft music and actually placing the notes of the music and the content and feeling of the music inside my head so that in the afternoon if man calls me up on the astral plane or if a woman calls me up on the astral plane or if I hear the voice of a little child and if I think maybe it's not that at all, maybe it's maybe it's a sneaky fox spirit out in the underbrush. Maybe it's that. If I say, I know, maybe it's those coyote brothers out in the nature preserve. It's maybe it's not a person at all. Or worse yet, maybe it's an antisocial personality who is um, overlit by the reptilian star races or the, or all by mistake, the mantid star races or some other form of, of uh, insectian star beings. Maybe it is a man who doesn't know that he's a man. He thinks he's some other kind of animal. Then I say to myself, these thoughts that are being thrown into my head, cast into my head, will be replaced by the most beautiful Mozart music, or they will be replaced by the most beautiful quiet instrumental mood music. Something else will be in this head than the imposter spirit's thought forms. <laughs>